Hey guys, so this is going to be a series of videos covering my XGen Interactive Groom workflow. And I've got my Baby Yoda Danny DeVito model loaded up here to demonstrate on. Uh, this video is going to be covering um, hair plates, how and why I use them, and um, the benefits of using them. So let me hide the hair and I'll pull up the hair plates. So the hair plates are just simple external geometry that um, sits on top of the base mesh of your character that conforms to the skin that you can then use to attach each XGen description to. And I have four plates here, the hair, the eyebrows, the eyelashes, and the beard. And there's no hard rules for how to separate them. You could uh, you could use you could attach all these together and have them be a single plate. There are reasons why I separate them the way that I do, and this is the method that I've had the most success with, and I think is the easiest workflow. So making the hair plates is actually really easy and barely takes any time, and I think it's totally worth it because it can end up saving you a lot of headaches later on. So once you have your base mesh brought in, you just make it a live surface, go over to quad draw, and then for example if I was gonna make another set of eyebrows, you can just, well make sure you have symmetry on as well, you can just go through and draw out roughly where you want those primitives to be on the surface of your model. I have soft select on too. And then you can just relax it out. And that's pretty much very the very simple workflow of how I got all of these plates to be in the shape and poly density that I have them. So let me delete these because I don't need extra eyebrows. So the reason I have them separated the way that I do is generally based on the quality of the hair for each description. So I have tried making the beard and hair plates combined, but it ends up being a lot more work because the texture of the beard hair is usually a lot different from the, uh, the texture of the hair. And it's usually a different color as well, and so you have to go through and paint a lot of extra maps uh, to make it work right and, and additional guides. Um, the eyebrows make sense to just be on their own. Uh, no need to separate them in the left and right. And originally I used to separate the eyelashes from top to bottom because there are generally, generally speaking, fewer lashes on the bottom of the eyelids than on the top. I ended up uh, combining them uh, over doing this many times because it ended up being easier just going through and painting a density map. So why use hair plates? Well, there's nothing wrong with painting your descriptions, your XGen Interactive Groom descriptions on your base mesh, but I think that using the hair plates is a much more non-destructive workflow and can save you a lot of time and headache, especially if something goes wrong or you need to swap out your mesh or even if you want to save this hairstyle and uh, you're happy with the way the hairstyle looks and you want to save it and, and put it on another character in another scene. All of this uh, it becomes a lot easier when you have the plate set up instead of painting directly on the model. So if you're like me and you're changing the model throughout the entire process and then rendering and then making small changes and bringing a new model, um, XGen does have a way of transferring descriptions, I believe it's descriptions transfer, uh, selecting your old base mesh and then your new base mesh. And most of the time it has worked, but it has been a little bit tricky and I've had, I've have run into problems before where it didn't transfer over entirely. And having the plates just bypasses that all entirely and will save you a ton of time. If you did bring in something 
and there was a slight change if, for example, you decided that his head was too wide and you went in and narrowed it. All you need to do is then go back, make a live surface, go back to quad draw, turn on soft select, and then it'll automatically conform to the new shape. Just This is just a quick and dirty example. And then if I turn back the hair on, you can see that he kind of looks like Shrek now. You can see that uh, the hair is conformed to the new shape of the head. So let me undo all of that. Uh, likewise, not just changing the shape, but if you wanted to change the topology, um, this can be a huge headache with XGen. I don't know if you've ever tried to do it, but um, say for example, I'll, I'll use the example on the hair plate, but if this was painted on your underlying mesh and you wanted to add an edge loop in, XGen has a really tough time interpolating new topology and it will give you blank faces. So for example, if I wanted to add a loop here, if I turn my hair back on, you'll see that it's it's bald for this poly loop. Oops. It's a little bit tough to see. But let me add So it's a little bit easier to see. You see that wh wherever I'm adding a new row, it's it's missing. So let me undo all of that. So this way, you the X Gen's just simplified and just sits on top and you don't have to worry about adding edge loops unless you're changing your model dramatically but in that case you'll probably want to redo your X-Gen in anyway. And then likewise because it is lower poly that's going to save you a ton of time uh, performance wise. So if your character was rigged, um, if you look the underlying mesh is a lot denser than the pol or than the uh, the poly density of the hair plates, and the more polys that XGen is attached to, the more computing power it's going to take to uh, render it out and um, animate, and it's just going to end up slowing everything down. So this way, having the simplified geometry on top that will be hidden will uh, help speed everything up and, and keep everything flowing quickly. And similar to what I was saying before about if you change the shape of the underlying mesh, even if you have the, the underlying mesh in the exact same shape that you want it to be in, um, it's nice to be able to just change the hairline ever so slightly. If you're going for a likeness portrait, um, it's nice to be able to finesse the hairline. And if you look... If you look on the side here, if I if I decided that this uh, side section of the hair coming down was too close to the eyebrows, and I wanted to push it back, if you look at the guides, they move along with the hair. Now, if you had painted the description directly onto this underlying mesh and you had guide set up and you had a guide set up out here and then decided that you wanted to push it back you would have to repaint that out and if you repainted it out and the guide the 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 root of the guide was no longer within that painted section that guide would then lose influence on your action you'd have to add a new guide and reshape it which isn't a huge deal but it can add up to a lot of time, especially if your hairstyle is complicated or longer. Um, it can take a long time to place each guide in the correct position. And uh, if it's in the middle of a bunch of other guides, 
you'd have to freeze them out and uh, it, it can be a big headache. You can skip all of that just by having the guides attached to the plate and then finessing the plate into position. I remember when I was building this, I put the plate way too low. I thought that his bald spot started way down here. And after a series of test renders, I was like, oh, this needs to be raised way higher up to, uh, to the top of the cap. And it was a lot easier. It was a lot less work to make those changes because I had those hair plates in place. All right. And then the last thing that I'll mention <laughs> for my sales pitch about hair plates is... Uh, if you are painting maps on to the hair plates, a density map or region map, it's nice to have the plates on their own separate UV tile. So let me pull up my UVs and show you what I mean. So if we look at the UV tile for the face... For example, if I was going to paint a density map for the eyebrows, um, I would have very little resolution to work with because I'd just be painting in a region right here, well, here and here. And then I'd have to save out like a 4K map or an 8K map, just have enough resolution, and it would only be a little white splotch right here, and the rest of the tile would be pretty much wasted. If you look at the UVs for the the eyebrow hair plates. This way I can spread them throughout the whole tile. I can save out a 2K map or a 4K map and, and have real fine control over the density map or the uh, the region map or whatever map you're painting. Uh, same with the hair. If I can select it. Um, gives you a lot more control uh, with whatever map that you want to paint. All right, so that pretty much is all I have to say on the topic of hair plates. I'll have more X-Gen Interactive Groom stuff going forward, uh, so stay tuned for that. Hopefully this was helpful for you, and please like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. I'll try to answer uh, everyone's questions below, and thanks for watching.